What's up, y'all? It's John, and I'm chilling here with. What's up? I'm Paul Tokizolu. Nice to meet you. And today we are out at the Rolla Farmers Market, meeting up with a buddy, uh, Randy Farrell, who works out at Harmony Farms. And we're also going to uh, check out the locals, see what they're up to, what they're growing, uh, what they've got going on, what their take on everything is, and try to gain some insight, some wisdom, some knowledge. Give us an idea of what we're doing out here. Uh, we, we have a, a, a small intentional community um, uh, based on uh, great bows. Um, we, we sell um, microgreens, uh, salad mixes, and baby root vegetables. Um, right now we only have microgreens. It's the first, first of the week of the season. Early in the year? Yeah, yeah. We always start out. Microgreens we grow year round. Um, and the, 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 the baby greens kick in and then the root vegetables. How long have you been farming and how long have you been coming out here? Uh, I've been to this market three years. Uh, I've been going to farmers markets for four years. Um, farming five years. I, I just took that first year just to practice, for, you know, just for myself. Based on your experience so far in these kinds of circles, how do you see things changing? What do you see it moving towards? Or what do you anticipate people to start gravitating towards more? Especially after this year, I, I feel like the local is going to be a big thing. Local food market, uh, more people want to, to, to see where the food comes from, uh, get to know the people that grow their food. I think just the local economy, local everything really, that is, needs to be a big thing. But I think it, I see a lot of people moving to it. Uh, when you have a local economy, a local uh, food movement, you, you're more able to weather like global things that are, that are happening. You know, um, when, when everything comes from local, you know, you, know, you, you get like a food cri a, a national food crisis. You know, you, you get your local, you're going to sustain it. You got your economy going up and down, but you still eat you know, local. I think. Uh, Community food sufficiency is kind of uh, resistant to supply chain disruption. Right. Yes. Exactly. Many hands make less work for everybody, as they say. Absolutely. I've been yeah. saying the same thing. <laughs> uh, what, what kind of troubles have you uh, run into, or what didn't you anticipate that you ended up having to overcome in all this? As far as community goes? Community, uh, farming, growing, sourcing materials, everything. This year has been really hard on seeds. So I think everybody started panic buying seeds like they were panic buying food. Community-wise, I think it's uh, personalities. You, when, you, when you live with a bunch of people, you got to make sure that you guys can uh, I think uh, the one thing I've learned in the last year is uh, have a better interview process. When, when you get the right people, everything just kind of clicks and it moves smoothly. And would, would you say the people that end up not being good fits kind of end up weeding themselves out pretty early? Actually, I, I have gotten pretty lucky that way. I mean, I, I, admittedly, those are the ones I learned the most from. Um, but yeah, it's, they, I've not had those, any kind of major problems as far as uh, people overstay and they're welcome type things. You know, I've, I've found solutions to where, you know, um, things worked out perfectly. So, would you say that uh, the process of the intentional community that you facilitate is more a matter of delineation, or are there bylaws, uh, unspoken agreements? How do people know the, the way of the land? Well, uh, for the past year, it's been more of a practice as people living together. But as of like a month ago, we actually sat down and we created four values. Uh, we've been discussing uh, bylaws, uh, communication processes, how we make decisions. You know, um, it's a thing where everybody's equal, everybody has an equal say. So uh, we do uh, what's called consensus. Uh, basically, everybody has to agree to every decision. Um, it takes one person to block something, but it, it makes uh, compromise uh, more authentic. How many people uh, stay at your intentional community? Um, at the moment, I have three. Uh, this is probably the lowest it had it in the last week. Uh, the winter time, it went down. Uh, people that 
State all winter are actually out traveling right now. So we have a I have like three people that are part timers. We're gonna call part timers uh, you know, six months of the year spend their summer traveling. Um, yeah, right now it's three, but then again, like I said, we're starting, basically starting from scratch. We're building the process, how to introduce people, how to become a member. And at that point, we're going to be ready to, to bring people into it. And, uh, do you have any idea on how large you're looking at expanding? Uh, I, I'm not going to be a, a large community. We, we are not going to be a large community. I mean, I'm thinking you know, 10 to 15 tops. Max. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what all are y'all growing and working on out there? Um, this year we actually opened up a new plot and we're looking into more storage, more you know, long-term crops just for the farm. Uh, we, 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 we do the potatoes, the beans, the dry beans, um, carrots, onions, you know, all that stuff. But as far as for selling, uh, we, we got into the market with microgreens. That was our niche market that we got in with. Then we started the salad mixes. Those are our two main products that we make the most of. Um, we got herbs, we got a lot of baby greens, arugula, you know, kale, stuff like that. And then the baby root vegetables. Um, a lot of it's geared towards what chefs would want to use. Um, although the chefs are not a thing right now, but right. hopefully <laughs> that will be soon. Uh, and of course, we're gonna, we have plans to expand into grocery stores and stuff like that. Uh, anything else you feel like we should know when looking at these topics or anything else you feel like before sharing? I feel like uh, communities are going to be a big thing. More people are going to be gravitated towards living community. I feel like human beings are meant to live that way, actually. I agree. I mean, that, if you look back in, you know, like pre times where there weren't cities, that's how we lived. You know, that was a natural way of going. I think. Uh, Quality of life is much better when you get a group together. I mean, share the weight. I mean, that's what it's all about, really, is quality of life. You know, I figure that if you got enough people, you all are only working some 30, 35 hours a week. That's what we're looking at. And that includes everything that includes house cleaning, dishes, food, you know, somebody playing music. Um, that's part of your, your, your hours, you know, and with everybody doing that. You know, there's a lot of other social aspect of it, you know, just raises your immune system, you're more happy, you're healthier, right. all around. There's strength in numbers and it takes a village. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to go take a look at the farm one day soon, but uh, I appreciate your input and appreciate you taking the time to speak with us and everybody that ends up watching. All right, well thank you for what you're doing too. That's the word out there. Nothing else I'd rather do. All right, thank you. <laughs> Can you tell us about your farm? What's it called? What do you grow? Um, we're uh, Love and Green Greens Homestead, uh, and uh, we grow microgreens. And, um, we grow uh, salad mixes. And, uh, we, we do a lot of different things. Uh, jewelry. And we, we have a lot of different things. We, do. we have another. Uh, my daughter's over in Salem. So is, is your operation primarily a family operation? Yes, yeah, just primarily a family. Okay. What kind of issues have you run into that you didn't anticipate, or what kind of obstacles have you had to overcome to um, kind of meet your goals and what you're doing? <laughs> uh, week to week, it's uh, very, very different. But you know, we have lots of children, so they participate. And, uh, we get uh, like. We've been trying to get our lettuce greens going, so we've just been, you know, out there cutting holes and, you know, getting things in the ground constantly, making, you know, trying to, uh, you know, get our seedlings going, and just we're just constant every day. It's just like trying to get more greens. Going, so. Have you noticed how, or can you explain how the community has responded to the pandemic, how things have been different, or if there have been supply issues, or uh, accessibility issues, uh, anything like that? Well, this is our first week here, okay. and obviously, I mean, we've almost sold out, um, so people are responding, like, they really want, you know, good, they really want good food, obviously. Get it out there too. That's the best thing you can do. Yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, 
anything additional that you'd like to share? Anything else you feel like we should know when trying to learn about these things through people? Um, like food, like nutritional value? Food, growing, difficulty obtaining resources, uh, difficulty finding help, um, what, whatever you feel like we should know. Um, like with the pandemic or? <laughs> pandemic or the process in general. Okay, um, well, I believe that, you know, to, you know, boost your immune system and, you know, give your body your nutritional value is, you know, extremely important in a time like this. Um, it really helps, you know, keep you healthy and keep your family healthy and, you know, when we started the microgreens, we, that's initially what we wanted to do is bring it to our family and make sure that we, we were boosting our immune system and, you know, sharing it with others, the extra that we have, you know, I mean, microgreens are extremely nutritional, so, you know, it just, we're, we're sharing something that is beneficial for our family, but also others. The, the best way to improve your, um, or reduce your ability to be yes. physically impaired is to just improve your health. Yes, yes, it's important. And simple. Talk, uh, there's there's been lots of it's spiritual good. talk over the last year. I mean, there's no one belief that dominates another one. Um, one of the core values is self improvement. Okay, um, oh, that's kind of what I was getting. Self improvement. Okay. Uh, we were talking about bringing people in, giving talks, you know, learning, and uh, always trying to. I mean, that's how I live my personal life is always trying to learn more. Yeah, I learn something new like every other month. Stagnance is death, so there's always growth and then right, you know, right, we're growing yeah. together and then we grow faster together. Yeah. Okay. And thanks to YouTube I can learn a lot. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Motivation in YouTube. I've learned a lot on YouTube. Learn how to, to weld on YouTube. Learn how to fix almost everything around here. Something breaks, I get on YouTube, figure out how to do it. So how long have you been here on this property doing what you're doing here? Maybe this about the middle of the summer be the third third summer so two years two years yeah and it was that we came from another farm for this one and um, how much of how much of your food would you say that you're able to produce from your farm as compared to having to go into town or store to get it uh, we're, we were uh, actually this year and I think the pandemic might have had something to do with it but we've decided to open a whole new plot just for the farm um, up to this point we've only been eating off the farm what we grow and we only grow what we sell to market which is um, high value quick growing greens mm -hmm. uh, salad mixes microgreens baby greens baby root vegetables and some herbs um, but now we've we're looking into uh, actually growing a lot more storage crops okay. uh, long-term crops stuff that don't grow within 60 days that's been my model way up to this point is it's got to grow quick come out in and out quick okay. you know but now we're putting in like uh, like uh, potatoes and green beans and peas and squash. Well, is this because maybe uh, were, were you before trying to turn a profit for the farm and now you're more yeah. concerned about feeding yourself? Exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah. We're looking towards next winter. We want to have a lot of food saved up for next yeah. winter because that might be a thing. Do you have you know? fruit trees going on out here? We do. We got a uh, mulberry, got nut a trees? persimmon. Um, I haven't found no nut trees nut yet. Tree. Yeah. Besides, you know, like acorns on them. That's not really edible, though. And how many acres did you guys have? Twenty nine. Yep. Most of it wooded. And are you uh, are you preferring like primitive dwellings? If people did come to stay and they were building their own dwelling, what, do primitive dwellings or is anything? Goes? Um, r right now it's mostly camping. Um, the 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 the, the, ta the the plan is to actually build like small tiny earth homes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I like, them. like tiny homes, basically a bed a bedroom. The little sandbag one round ones and then the wood tops of the... There's a, I, I've spent this winter learning everything I could about earth homes. I bought several books and uh, there's all kinds of... The more people we get, the more plots. I have a spot for two more plots to expand into. Um, and then it, and then it's based on um, how much the, the farm can generate as far as income. Mm -hmm. But the more people you get, the more sources of income you can do. Maybe one person is doing medicine making medicines one person's uh i this winter i learned everything there could be to learn how to grow mushrooms how much do you know about mushrooms 
Um, I th I'm ready to to start growing them commercially. Okay. Um, I I gotta do some practicing first. I don't plan on really doing commercial till next year, but I'm gonna spend all summer growing. Um, I bought four books. I bought John Stamos Stamets Stamets book. He's like one of the the, the, the Full people. House guys. Is that John? No, Stamos? no, no, no. Stamos. <laughs> I said Stamos, but. It's, <laughs> Damn it! Stand, I'd have not, to go get the book in here. Okay, yeah, he's he's like the the lead, the, one of the uh, one of the people that really brought growing mushrooms into the forefront. Okay. Um, he's got the book, oh, wow. as they say. He's got the, the best book in the business called uh, How to Grow uh, Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms. Mm -hmm. um, he's done lots of research, but yeah, I mean that and several YouTubers. Um, I think I'm ready uh, to grow. Oyster, Lion's Mane, Rashish, Vermessen, uh, Mataki, um, King, Strat, Strata, something, something. Wow. Um, there's a few other ones in there. Uh, so, in addition to doing like communal living here, would you be interested in doing uh, um, habitatual learning, like where people can just come and uh, maybe camp on your land for a couple of days and get to help you in the garden and learn how to do this for themselves, or learn oh, yeah, mushrooms, yeah. That's or learn actually bees? Mostly what I've done last year is people coming through and staying a little while and helping out on the farm. And, okay. Um, I think that's what Ozzo was doing was he was here, was learning everything he could. Um, I've had a few people like that say they want to come and, and I show them how, how I do what I do. And then, you know, they help out and they stay okay. for a little while. Yeah. And they, I can have a lot of people interested in Yeah, yeah. Because you know, they want to keep one foot in the world that they're in because they're still kind of scared. Yeah, but yeah, they yeah. really like, man, we really need to learn some of this shit because, like, this ain't going to last for very long. Right. So. We're, we're, we're really open to travelers. I think that's probably our main thing right now. Most of the people that come through are, are temporary. Yeah, so people that I have that are interested, uh, can I just give them directly to you and you just talk to them directly? And uh, you Yeah, do, yeah. I yeah. mean, I'll vet them first. I'll be like, yeah, make sure they're not, you know, on some kind of crazy trip or anything and then yeah I'll get to know anybody I, I, once I get to know them then I'll leave them in the house yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah and definitely I mean I got, I I got five people I coming I got five people coming through here Wednesday um, how soon were you trying to build extra accommodations out here and do you have designs narrowed down about the process that you want to use no no uh, I'm at least a month off yeah, Fred. Fred's gonna be having the full. Uh, who lives out here in the tree, our tent village? He has like five tents set up out there. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, except for rooms. <laughs> but anyways, uh, she, hers is gonna be the first one. Um, so it's gonna be based on her design and what she wants. Um, she's working on it right now. I've let her borrow my books, um, and then the idea is when somebody comes and they build their house, everybody else is going to help them build it, you know, that kind of thing. Even, I want to eventually get out there and get my own house too, and then the, this building will be just the communal, communal area. Okay. <clears throat> that's, that's a big thing that we have been talking about doing is, like, people are getting strangled to death by rent mm -hmm. and not being able to make an income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the big issue is space. There's enough resources, there's enough methods, and there's enough hands that want to build stuff. <laughs> Um, the real issue seems to be uh, finding a way for everybody to focalize their efforts through the same kind of foundation. Right. Um, which is something that we have been talking about doing as a group is, I think I may have mentioned it to you, is uh, a crowdsource, crowdfund movement. Mm -hmm. um, not only act as a financial conduit, but also a resource material conduit to repurpose everything towards everybody's collective security. And that includes... Uh, living arrangements, clean water, uh, seeds, and I've been thinking about maybe even attach a seed repository to the movement. Like if we give you seeds, replenish what you got out of your yield, and then maybe then some. There, there, there's a best way to do everything, but a lot of people disagree about what that is. <laughs> All right. So um, I see a lot of opportunity to kind of facilitate the next exodus in a healthy way that serves to facilitate a transition rather than accommodate collapse. We, we, we got to be ready for it, I think. Um, so, yeah, they, I mean, that's ultimately that's that's one of my like, things I'd like to see is us coming together as a family, as a local family, and and getting ready to invite the world, you know, or the nation. Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, we'll put it together.